Imagine a scorching summer where unbearable heat and dry desert winds rule the day. These relentless winds whip up dusty storms that could easily bury an entire caravan alive under heaps of sand dunes. Welcome to the Sahara. But wait, right in the heart of this lifeless landscape, there's an extraordinary sight. It's like something out of a science fiction movie, reminiscent of lunar vistas. Here, a lone railway track snakes its way through the unforgiving terrain, and it's known as the Mauritanian Railway. Now this isn't your everyday train journey. This railway track looks like it's straight out of a post-apocalyptic Mad Max film, a thrilling, hair-raising adventure. Today we're going to take you on a wild ride along one of the most extreme routes in the world. So fasten your seatbelts, because this story is going to be one heck of a journey. Let's dive right in. Step into the world of Mauritania, a vibrant Islamic country in West Africa. Back in 1963, something extraordinary happened. Mining companies laid down a special railway connecting the iron mines of Zore to the seaport of Nwadibu. This railway became the backbone of Mauritania's development. Imagine this, a long, narrow railway stretching through the vast Sahara Desert, carrying the treasures of the land. It changed everything. Before this, getting iron ore out of the desert was tough, but now this railway made it possible to send these valuable minerals to the port. From there, they traveled across the Atlantic to be turned into money. Since then, this railway has been like a supercharger for Mauritania's economy. In 1974, both the mines and the railway became a part of the Société Nationale Industrielle et Minière, SNIM, cementing their importance. Today, the mining industry is a big deal in this part of West Africa. Every year, the railway carries a mind-blowing 15.6 million tons of iron ore for export. The railway itself is over 700 kilometers long, and the trains are gigantic. They're pulled by three to four powerful engines, dragging more than 80 tons of iron ore in each of the 250 freight cars. The total weight of the cargo? A jaw-dropping 16,000 tons. Now don't be fooled by the desert's flat look from far away. Driving this massive train through it is like a puzzle. There are steep climbs and tricky descents to navigate. It's slow going with speeds less than 50 kilometers per hour. A one-way trip takes more than 20 hours and sometimes even a couple of days. But this isn't just about minerals. The train also brings something even more precious than gold to some Mauritanian village's water. In these tough conditions, water is life, and the train helps supply it. In fact, some villages owe their existence to this railway. People from far-off villages used to come here for supplies, and eventually they settled closer to the railway. They live along the tracks and work in railway maintenance. Keeping this lifeline going is a real team effort. The ever-shifting sands pose a challenge. Special systems are in place, but they need constant help from people. Sensors get covered in dust and sand, so local track walkers play a vital role in keeping things clear. And in the middle of all this, a heartwarming tradition continues. The Bedouins, the desert's indigenous people, gather along the railway to watch the colossal train go by. As a special gesture, the driver's assistant throws bread out of the window to these waiting Bedouins. This small act means a lot to them. A ride on the Mauritanian train isn't just a trip. It's an adventure. It's a story of human skill and determination in one of the world's toughest places. It's a connection between people and resources and a sign of Mauritania's progress in the shifting sands of time. Embark on an extraordinary journey through the vast desert, tracing the familiar route from Mauritanians, a route that unveils the unique social and economic mission of the ghost train. This remarkable train consists entirely of open freight cars laden with green iron ore. At the tail end of this iron convoy, you'll find accommodations for more affluent travelers, a couple of dilapidated wagons reminiscent of passenger cars, albeit without electricity, with just roofs to shield passengers from the elements. Here, passengers sleep, eat, and even boil tea on gas cylinders, but few are willing to brave such questionable comfort. Tickets must be paid for, and most Bedouins prefer to ride on the open freight platforms, perched atop heaps of iron ore, despite the deadly danger and official prohibition. Riding in a freight car may be free, but it demands preparation and a fierce battle with fellow contenders for a spot in the grimy wagon. The ghost train sets off from the first station early in the morning, but it doesn't adhere to a strict schedule. Frequent delays at intermediate stations are par for the course. 
Those bound for Noah Debo sometimes find themselves waiting for several hours, or even the entire night. Upon arriving at the station, a frenzied scene unfolds as passengers without tickets must hastily load goats, donkeys, baskets brimming with goods for market, as well as their loved ones. After a chaotic boarding process, the train slowly chugs away from the station. During the journey, passengers sit, lie down, and eat on piles of iron ore. In one corner of the wagon, they tend to their natural needs, and when the train slows down, wagons collide, giving the illusion of a derailment. Passengers stumble and fall, some even perilously close to the tracks. For those who opt not to spend the extra $3 on a ticket, the journey isn't particularly comfortable either. Picture a European train car from the 1970s with no doors, glass windows, seats, cushions, lighting, or even a toilet. Add a thick layer of dust covering everything, luggage and goods stacked to the ceiling, and narrow corridors with poles protruding from the walls. The smell of dirt pervades the air, creating a grimy, chaotic atmosphere. The ground. Travelers on this journey are in a constant state of discomfort and risk. However, all these hardships are compensated by the breathtaking beauty of the sand dunes, where the sun spectacularly dissolves at sunset. For leisure travelers, a trip on the Mauritanian railway is an adventure, a chance to test their mettle. But for locals, it's often the only means to traverse the desert in search of sustenance or a better life. They have their unique perspective on the journey. During the journey, you will see rocks, sand, bushes, camels, goats, and lonely old huts, and also a lot of dust. Once your eyes adapt to the surroundings, you'll begin to distinguish the colors and shades of the sand as it changes with the angle and lighting. As darkness falls, you can enjoy a beautiful view of the Milky Way stretching across the night sky. While walking around the train is allowed, it can be dangerous, with no barriers or safety measures. The train departs agonizingly slowly, and unexpected jolts can occur throughout the journey. Officially, the train doesn't stop between Noah Debu and Shum, but it does pause for prayer. Some passengers disembark to perform the ritual, returning as the train resumes its journey. While tourists may find this ritual strange, it's a norm for the local residents, the majority of whom are devout Muslims. However, the exact arrival and departure times of the train remain unclear, so passengers may have to wait for extended periods. Mauritania might not offer a plethora of tourist attractions, but this train is its true treasure. Despite the brutal travel conditions, locals hold the ghost train in high esteem, even featuring it on their currency. Unfortunately, Mauritania still grapples with the scourge of slavery. While officially abolished in 1980, approximately 20% of the population remains enslaved, with enslaved children born into servitude. This stark reality casts a somber shadow over one of the world's most extreme and perilous railway routes. In the end, this isn't just a train journey. It's an odyssey through a land of stark contrasts, where the relentless desert unfurls its harsh beauty, and the relentless struggle for survival echoes through the ghost train's rattling wheels. If you found this video enjoyable and informative, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Top Visionary channel. Don't forget to explore our archive of previous videos for more engaging content. Thank you for joining us on this journey and we look forward to seeing you in our next adventure.